let's talk about Chris Getz. He was mentioned last night by Bruce Levine to me. He was, he's been mentioned by Bob Nightingale as someone internally who could get the job. Dan, why is he unqualified to be the top baseball person for the Chicago White Sox or, in fact, any team? Because of what we know a top baseball person is tasked with doing now, he hasn't done this. He's been a, a, a baseball side scout slash executive scout, which is very, very different from being a president of baseball operations and being entirely in charge of an entire arm of an organization. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Project Birmingham is Dunder Mifflin 2.0. OK, let's let's go through oh, what, no. what big thing is has he, he done Ryan? as a scout. As a scout? Yeah. Well, He's Ryan, isn't he? Project Birmingham was his thing? Right. Does Project Birmingham exist anymore? No. Okay. It, it never really did. It was just a made-up concept. Have good prospects? Right. Remember that time Oscar Colas got called up and they were like, he's going to be here, and then he wasn't? All that, I'm doing is a making sign? a case Was here. that the sign of, of your prospect capital being developed and or evaluated properly? Was that it? Was it Lenny and Sosa? Well, I think that you have the one of the reasons why he should not be in charge, Layla. Right. Right. It's the fact that you have the top 100 prospect list in MLB, and you know who the names are that are on it. Colson Montgomery, Edgar Cairo, who you got by trading with the Angels, Lucas Giolito and Reynaldo Lopez for. And Noah Schultz, who they drafted last year. That's it. That's it. What about that says promote the guy who's in charge of that? When all we hear about is how bad their prospects are. And even after this sell-off, the farm system is still not in the right place. The, the other issue to me is, is gets his fingerprints all over this. Why would you fire those two and then not fire the guys underneath him? And until yesterday, who knew that both he and Jeremy Haber had the titles of assistant GM? Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Because I did not. And th this just is typical. It's so. T this is the oldest story in sports. Hey, come here. I got the owner here for a second. You know, those guys got doing those jobs. I could do the job better than they could. You, know, you should think about. It. I got. I got. Remember Dayton Moore? You know him. How yeah, is this? He, he'd come over and work. Can I it. offer? How is this not Tim Floyd? Can I it's offer more two like more Jim names? Boylan. It's more like Boylan. What he did to Michael Reinsdorf. Can I offer two more names that would disqualify Chris Getz to being your top baseball person? Yeah. Omar Vizquel, mm -hmm. Wes oh. Helms. How was he in charge of, of those guys? Because that's what he was in charge of. Man, the minor is, league of, system. Of minor league, of, of those hires? Two, two abusers? And listen, I know that people like Chris Getz. He's a very nice person. That is not what we are talking about here. If Throw the babies out with the bathwater in this case. Yes. Fire everybody. Right. If you want to, if you want to out it, of the building, if you want to do it the right way, yes. What you would do is you would start over. You would start an extensive search. If you wanted to bring in people that you trusted to help you through the process, I wouldn't necessarily have a problem with it. Here, here's the thing, and I think it's something that we all need to address, put out there as plainly as possible. Whatever the circumstances are, Jerry Reinsdorf doesn't know anything about baseball. And it's sad. It's really sad that after spending a lifetime in baseball, he doesn't know anything, nor does he know anybody other than the people that have already been in his orbit. And I get it. At this point in your life, are you going to go out and you're going to try and meet new people? Are you going to trust new things? Probably not, even though you should. But for all of his waxing poetic about the trolley Dodgers when he was growing up and everything else, this man continues to prove that he may love baseball, but he doesn't know a damn thing about it. We've seen two very rash decisions made in a very short amount of time. Mm-hmm. And that should at least raise the eyebrows of some people. And I'm not saying that it wasn't the right call when it came to Rick and Kenny. But knowing what we know about the organization, 
Those were rash decisions in the way they were handled. That's what I mean by call me at home. I don't need to come in here for you to fire me and, and send me, call me at 930. And then to say like, to say that you want to have somebody in place by the end of the season, even though you trusted those two with the trade deadline (sighs) and emphasis on those two. Mm-hmm. Because that is what we have heard. Speak on Kim it. Ang said it herself. And by the way, Kim Ang is the person who needs to be here. That's a name. That's, that, that's a name. A, that's somebody qualified. That's not a name. That's resume. And that's your own damn system. And that's somebody that was in the organization in yep. the past, right? You actually Correct. you produce somebody who was qualified to do the job. And not just that, but but given what you should be proud of and how you've promoted executives and had representation, Kim Ang should be your person. But the names that you should Start be talking there. about. I mean, but Dayton Moore, Dayton Moore, Chris Young is running Texas. That's what you need to know. I, I know enough about Dayton Moore to know he's a weirdo. He's and just he, outdated. It's outdated information. It's outdated data. I, I the, the fact that he championed the cause of a child molester as powerfully as he did is is disqualifying for me. Great point, too, about all the awful stuff that went on in the White Sox organization on Chris Getz's watch with Omar Vizquel and Wes Helms. All the terrible things that were going on. No shame there. I, I mean, to me, it he shouldn't even be mentioned. But he seems to have pulled off quite the coup. And to, and to get his name mentioned and as the... Quickly. Very yeah, quickly. Just look at the timing. Look at the sourcing. It is so... If you've been around sports long enough at any level... It stinks. You know who's doing the whispering. Mm-hmm. You know where that starts. Hey, you know. Hey, by the way, how, I, I wouldn't have done it that way. How I on, wouldn't have picked that guy. How on earth did Pedro Grafol survive this? Just timing of the contract? When when I uh, I made uh, reference to our, our old colleague Jimmy Pearsall, he's an ass kisser. Eh. Um, if you if you ask anyone about Pedro's a survivor, and he has been surviving by kissing ass for a really long time. That's cool. I thought they played games on the field where you could see the record and the results and stuff. They sure do. And you know he manages people who can also tell you what's going on. They sure do, but. It, it seems to be the way to get things done in Kansas City because Kansas City should not be the example. That is also correct, but that for for whatever reason, and that's why I go back to the owner doesn't know anything about baseball. For whatever reason, he still seems seems to want to be that instead of the franchise that he grew up watching. He he is a a, a self reported Dodgers fan way back when they were in Brooklyn. My heart broke when they went out to LA. All he would have to do is look to, I don't know, the people who he partners with in Arizona in a shared space and facility and look at the way that they do business and do it that way. He chooses to ignore it. He could also look at a franchise like the Rays and say, well, maybe we're a little closer to who they are because we can't spend the type of money that LA could spend. Nope. He chooses not to do that. Not even Cleveland. You didn't even look in your own division. Oh, they're looking their own division at the worst possible choice. You didn't look up. You looked down. You looked down. And the only reason I can think of the only single one is budget. Yep. I, I just don't know how you aren't better vetting some of these people that you're bringing in. I, I, vet, vetting? What do you need? Just just look at the records. Like, does that... But even beyond that, I mean, the stuff that Dayton Moore said about Luke Heimlich, Luke Heimlich, a convicted child molester, he's, he, he sexually assaulted a six-year-old. And Dayton Moore said he went out and performed this year. He achieved athletic excellence, academic excellence. He went undrafted. Teams are trying to find out more information. They're trying to come to grips with this. This is something that happened in their family. Their family has dealt with this, and their family remains very close. 
Right. Okay. So, so that's a guy you want in your the Dayton Moore wanted in his organization someone who who sexually assaulted a six year old. But we're the ones in their family. Yeah. But we're the ones who are bad people for connecting the dots between Tony Larusa's second DUI conviction, Wes Helms's cloudy firing, Omar Vizquel's well reported tenure in this organization, and, and total and, exile, and Mike Clevenger's situation, which. A major league baseball investigation may excuse him of the rules, but doesn't exactly explain away the behavior. Why don't we take a break? Let's talk more about it. There's also, I have one ownership rumor that is meant to give hope. That I'd like is to it share. real or are you making it up? Is I it didn't the make, Minnesota Twins? Because they I, seem to be owning everything right now. I didn't make it up. I wish I had because it actually, like, it is very much on brand for your boy. I wish I had, but whatevs. Go White Sox. 